memories. Imagine going to another country where the culture is different and you can't even speak the language. My mother, Paulina Anna Tulio, made this difficult journey in 1955. Today I will share with you the memories that she shared with me. From Gallinara, near Roma, to America, the land of opportunity. After World War II ended, life was difficult for Italians in southern Italy. My grandfather knew the only way for the family to survive was to go to America and search for work. He made his journey with his eldest son, and a year later, saved up enough money to send for my mother, my grandmother, and her other brother. Because my mother had never left her own home village, she was very scared to go on a boat and go across the ocean. Due to this fear, on their way to America, my grandmother had to take a rope and tie it around her waist, and then tie it around my mother's waist, so my mother would not fall into the water. To this day, she remains terrified of water and can't even let the water touch her face in the shower. Once she docked in New York, a relative picked them up and drove them to Detroit. Like Richard Rodriguez, my mother was considered different from all her other classmates, and they often called her names. Once my mother and her classmates traveled to the zoo for a day, my grandfather gave her one dollar for lunch. And on the bus, a cool young girl took my mother's dollar as a joke. Because of this, my mother could not eat the whole day. The only person who ever took the time to make friends with my mother was her best friend and neighbor, Kathy Hopper. Now both of them are growing and married with children. And the funny thing is, is that I'm best friends with Mrs. Hopper's daughter, Kelly. Time? Two on eight. I'll need your cards. Thank you. Three seconds left. The game is tied one to one. The puck is on your stick, and it's up to you to make the last goal the win. You shoot. The puck slips off the slick surface of your blade, and you miss the net for your team. Today, I'm going to inform you the correct way to take the blade and handle of a hockey stick. I have played women's female hockey for nine years on many successful teams. Even at the age of 12, I traveled to Europe to compete against many teams from different countries. After I show you how to layer tape so the final result is smooth, and how to take the handle so you have a great grip for stick handling and shooting, you will be able to be the best hockey player you can be. Start off with the blade of a hockey stick. This is called the toe, and this is called the heel. And when you're taping the blade of a hockey stick, you want to use friction tape. The difference between friction tape and regular tape is that friction tape is sticky. And you also want to make sure that the tape is black because you can camouflage the puck so the, the other people on the team, your opponents, cannot see the puck when you have it on your stick. You want to start by pulling the tape from the roll, like so, and placing it. Usually it depends on what kind of hockey player you are, if you like it, just a little bit of tape or a lot, but usually you can just generally guess. And you want to place it on the blade, like so and stick it. And you want to just continue wrapping. And as you wrap, it's important that you smooth it with your hand so you have a nice smooth blade. And continue to wrap and smooth. Continue to wrap. And then once you're finally done, like so, you're going to want to Rip it by putting your hand like this and just kind of pull it like that. And then taping it. And your final product should look like this. Nice and smooth. For taping the handle, you want to use, instead of friction tape, regular hockey tape. A trick so you have a great grip is by holding the roll of tape like this and twisting it. Until it gets really tight, like 
so I'm placing it at the top of the handle, or actually at the bottom of the handle, like that. And you want to wrap it around so you get to the very top. And then you want to wrap around, going down the stick. you reach where you started and then come back up again. And then once you reach the top again, you want to continue wrapping around so you get lots of tape on there and it gets thick. That way when you're holding on to the stick, when you're either stick handling or shooting, your hand won't fall off the stick. And hopefully, it'll be easy to rip. taping your stick, you evenly place the tape on the stick, allowing a good shot and great stick handling. With lots of practice and dedication, I guarantee you will be a master at taping. This time, there's three seconds left. You get a pass from your left winger. You shoot. You score. Thanks to your great expertise at taping sticks. Time on that? Okay, Matthew, you can clean up. We've got five minutes remaining. If someone were to ask you right now, can you tell me some interesting facts about art history? Most of you in this room would have no answer. Many people in the world today express no true appreciation or knowledge for art for the art world and the famous painters that existed many years ago. Renoir was a master impressionistic painter who used vibrant colors to express scenes of everyday life. <laughs> um, art takes a lot of dedication and you must take interest in its past. During his early life, Renoir was a low paid apprentice who worked in Paris. After many years of art school and dedication, Renoir wanted to fulfill his dream. He wanted to become a profound painter of all of history. During his early life, he was born in Limoges, France, where he learned porcelain painting and showed an early, where he showed an early talent for painting. He painted shades, window shades and fans in Paris. Gautzad Drani, stated that Renoir studied at Charles Glare's studio, where he met Monet and other young painters who were to form the Impressionistic group. Edward Manet and the, and the color methods of Eugene Delgro influenced him greatly. During his middle life, this was called the Impressionistic period. Alberto Martini wrote, Renoir and Claude Monet together developed the broken color technique of Impressionist. Instead of mixing paints completely, they left small dabs of different colors side by side, permitting the eye to blend them together. The author Bailey writes, Renoir was more interested in, each, in rich color effects and preferred figure painting over landscapes. I read from the author Adrini that during the 1870s, Renoir painted many portraits on commission. Perhaps his most famous was Madame Charpenier, and her children. This painting revived the Rococo style. His last years of life, his work did not show agony because he suffered from arthritis, where his hands finally crippled in his later years. The author Martini states, the arthritis was so bad, Renoir would have to tie his paintbrushes to his crippled hands. Renoir, due to this, Renoir created his final style, where he paint in broad brush strokes with vivid colors. In conclusion, Renoir was a renowned master impressionistic painter who enjoyed painting pictures of girls, young children, and intimate pictures of French middle class life. 
Due to Renoir, the broken color technique developed. People saw art to be a different extent, to a different extent. Hopefully, when you are faced with a question about art, you will be able to give an intelligent feedback, and also, I hope that you now have great appreciation for artists of the past, especially Pierre Augusto Renoir, Master of Impressionist painting. Right, do you know? I'm not sure. I forgot to check with. Boston College is one of the largest Roman Catholic colleges in the United States. It is a Jesuit influenced college and offers a lot of extracurricular curricular activities as well as many academic classes. It consists of students from every state in the United States as well as students from more than 85 countries across the world. It was voted the best college of 2001 by the U.S. News. The U.S. News stated unusually strong commitment to undergraduate teaching. I have been interested in Boston College ever since my brother decided to look into Boston College for tenure for undergraduate school. When we went to visit Boston College, I was very, um, I fell in love with Boston College due to its um, revival Gothic architecture throughout the campus. You should just be able to use your clicker. Um, okay. Basically, um, one of their new academic campaign campaigns is $260 million plan, and it states that it adds 50 full-time faculty positions, expands faculty and graduate research, increases student and financial aid, and widens opportunities in key undergraduate programs. For endowment, there's $260 million. For buildings, there's 50 million, and current use, 90 million. Not only is Boston College very successful in its academics, it also has a wide variety of athletics. Boston College is a member of the NCAA Division One, <coughs> Division One, and offers many scholarships. Some intergalactic get. get <laughs> Sports include baseball for men, basketball for men and women, crew for men and women, cross country for men and women, fencing for men and women, skiing for men and women, tennis for men and women, water polo, volleyball, and most of all, ice hockey for men and women. BC also has many safety services on its campus, which includes night transportation, and escort services, 24-hour emergency telephone alarm services, 24-hour patrols by trained security personnel, electro electronically operated dormitory entrances. <clears throat> Boston College is located about 20 minutes from the heart of Boston via trolley. Um, there are many places to go, especially for college students. Um, one of the most renowned um, Boston bars in Boston. It's where it's the <clears throat> Kells Bar, where the college crowd flocks for flowing great music and packed dance floors and a good time. Best bar in Boston. And also in Boston is where the Sally Jesse, Jesse Raphael. Uh, show is so you can go with a bunch of your groups of friends or buddies from college. And basically, um, Boston College is a great under, has a great undergraduate program and many extracurricular activities. And it's a small private college which is co that's co-ed and it would be great for you. And you can email right here and click
who your name, phone number, and address, and what, when you expect to enter college. Time?